Welcome to Family Gamer TV. We've just been looking at Onki Overdrive and some of the new track and some of the new cars. And I've got Hans Tapina, yeah. um, president of Onki, yeah. and you've been showing us some really exciting stuff. What do you think? What's the headline today? Yeah, so the headline is the uh, Overdrive coming out in on September 20th is the next version of Anki Drive. And a lot of things changed since the last time. Gameplay has gotten a lot deeper. The tracks you can build are completely different. So it's a completely different game and coming out on September 20th. So se September 20th, you've not announced the date before. And that's, that's not too far away. I'm going to be excited to get that home and play it. Yes, very soon from now. So just two months from now, yeah. And so Overdrive not only comes with the click together magnetic track which we've seen already but some of these great new cars as well so there's, there's six I think in total is that right? Yes so at launch we're gonna have six cars available two come in the base set ground shock and skull and then there are four available as expansion cars right at launch and two of them I'm holding here. And so these two are sort of revealed today, mm -hmm. Big Bang and Guardian. Guardian. That's right. Yes, so Big Bang is a car much bigger than all the other ones, also heavier, um, also available at launch. And uh, Guardian is a police car. So we made sure that all the cars, they don't just look very different, but they also behave in very different ways, have very different upgrade trees. All the items you can use for them are, um, to a large part, only available for specific cars. So they're going to be upgradable in very different ways from each other. That seems to be a theme with Overdrive as opposed to uh, Anki Drive. That there's, it feels more like a video game to me. There's more progression, there's a bit more story and sort of yeah. more tailored characters. That's right. So definitely the characters are a lot more tailored. The, what we call the commanders, which are the virtual characters, which then actually drive those cars against you or I. They're much, much deeper than before. There are a lot more of them. They're much more different from each other. So they are really their own characters. They're really good at certain games, but not so good at other games. Like, for example, one of them might be really good at King of the Hill, but not so good at race and vice versa. So depending on which level you're currently in, which commander, which team of commanders you're trying to beat, you might have to beat them at different types of, of games. And on some of them, they will be good. On other ones, they won't be as good. So you mentioned King of the Hill there. So that's a, that's a brand new mode that's right. for the new game. Yep. Yeah. So King of the Hill is a completely new gameplay mode, which didn't exist before. And that is sort of a, uh, it's like a game of tack, as in if, uh, if I shoot at another car, and then I am king of the hill, my lights on the car will start flashing and that means for everybody else in the game to go after me. You're the target. Exactly, you're the target and your goal is, or my goal in that case, is to not get shot for as long as I can and once somebody has 60 seconds uh, or is, n is not getting shot for 60 seconds, that means they become really king of the hill and win that game. And it sounds like sort of the difficulty curve it goes on longer with Anki Drive. You were talking about some modes and some um, commanders mm -hmm. that no one on the, even the test team in the offices has beaten yet. Right, that's absolutely true. And so it both go it goes both ways actually. So in the very, very beginning, the really early commanders are actually very easy to beat. And they are so easy that in the very beginning, the first two or three, they're actually much more of a tutorial where while you play against the commanders, they're really there to teach you how to play. And then it becomes harder, harder, harder over time. And then as you get to like the last cruise or even halfway through, it becomes very difficult and very strategic. And then you really have to figure out how to upgrade your cars and how to play best and uh, whom to whom to play with, for example, as in like you and I might have to play together to beat some of those crews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you said September 20th, I think. Yes. Um, do you have a, a price as well for UK and US? Yes, that's right. So uh, UK price is £149 for the base set, which comes with uh, uh, two of the cars, uh, uh, Ground Shock and Skull, 10 track pieces, which allow you to build eight different tracks and then all kinds of things you need, like a four car charging platform and so forth. And then um, if you go and get, let's say, um, an accessory pack, like the two, cur two curves come in a multi-pack, then you can already build over 20 different tracks. So, and when you get one more add-on pack, then the number of tracks you can build is already so big that we don't know how big, mm -hmm. how, what the number really is yet. Mm -hmm. So those expansion packs, how much do they cost? Yeah, so they range anywhere, depending on which one it is, from uh, 9.99 to uh, 29.99. One of my favourite ones was where you can take off. There's a, little, there's a launch pack, I think it's called. That's right. Yeah. Which um, allows the cars to jump and they, they cope with that jumping. That's right. So there is a launch pack where you can jump and that jump is actually integrated into the game. So depending on how you use it and so forth, it's very strategic to figure out how to use it. You saw a special item earlier, the um, uh, tractor beam. So if you use that tractor beam, let's say I'm trying to jump and you're trying to prevent me from jumping, you can use the tractor beam and slow me down and I might not make it over. Nice. And... Um, 
uh, same thing is true for the turbo boost. Let's say you're trying to jump and you use the turbo boost, you're gonna jump farther, which could be dangerous if there is a curve behind it. But um, so it's up to you to figure out how to use that jump. And then there is another expansion piece also available at launch, and that's the four-way intersection. And you can really build that into the game and then you can have cars come at that intersection from all four sides. And it's called the collision kit because it creates a lot of collisions and so forth and becomes very strategic trying to figure out how to either cause a collision, prevent a collision or uh, just making sure not getting shot. Especially for gameplay modes like Race or King of the Hill, it's very interesting trying to figure out how to deal with something like an intersection. That sounds great. And so if, you've, if a family's already got um, the first game on drive mm -hmm. um, and they've got some cars and maybe they're yeah. that, and how much, what, which bits carry forward to the new game? Yeah, so we made sure that uh, all the things carry forward and even backward if you really want to. Um, just because we have so many people who already have an, uh, a drive set, we wanted to make sure they can use everything in the game. So for example, if you have a bunch of old uh, drive cars, and you get an overdrive set and you turn on your cars, the app will recognize them and say like, hey, do a quick software update on those cars, which they will do automatically, and then the cars are usable in, in overdrive. And the uh, same thing is true for the tracks. If you really wanna play on an ro old rollable track, you can play an overdrive game on an old rollable track. Yeah, yeah that sounds nice, because some of, the, some of the, um, those rollout tracks had some nice little features like the choke points and the crossovers. Mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, so that'd be nice to take forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can definitely do that. I think most people are gonna be using the, the new modular tracks, but definitely for the, for the cars. I do think for people who already have the old ones, it makes sense to use them. And it's not that the new ones are better, um, they, they look nicer just because we're spending so much time and effort on the details, but they're balanced in a way that you can absolutely win a race or a King of the Hill or so using one of the old cars. So it's not that the new ones from the features themselves are, are really better. They are comparable. Yeah. And how about battery life? When I play it with my kids, that is one thing they're like, they want to play more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm like trying to get them back on the charger when they're not being used. Yeah. Is the battery life any better in the new game? Uh, it's exactly the same as before. Um, so it's about 20 to 25 minutes. It's a little bit more than before but it's about 20 to 25 minutes and then six to eight minutes of, of charge time and what we see is that people who um, while they're charging the cars they usually spend their time in the garage uh, trying to figure out how to upgrade their cars for the next round and so the cars will charge so you put them on the charger can't you yeah is that right and then they're charging while you do the upgrading that's exactly right uh -huh. yep so you take the after I don't know four five six races when the batteries are low you put the cars on the charger and then you go into your garage and figure out how to equip your cars for the next uh, race or battle or king of the hill that sounds great um, I mean some other products in a similar space although quite different other games like Skylanders and Disney Infinity mm -hmm. they call themselves toys to life mm -hmm. is that a category that you see uh, on key inhabiting as well or is, are you something completely different? Yeah, so I, I think the word uh, um, uh, Toys to Life is not wrong. Um, when I just compare it to anything else out there, it's pretty much the inverse of everything else because when you look at any of those Skyliners or something like that, what you, you have plastic figures, but the actual gameplay of what you really do, that happens completely in the computer. That's a complete video game. For us, it's the inverse, where we're mainly interested in making sure that people don't sit all the time in front of a computer, but you can really the actual play, the thing you really do all the time is happening uh, in the real world. It's completely three-dimensional in your living room, in your bedroom. Yeah, nice. Well, I'm looking forward to when it launches and yeah. trying it out at home and my kids are particularly looking forward to it. So thanks for showing us t that today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having us and I'm very curious to see who is going to beat the last uh, Commander uh, team. I have to get practicing. Yes. <laughs>